Hello and welcome to Auto Experts. I'm your host, Barbara Balfour. And on tonight's show, we're going to talk about how we always remember our first. Our first bully, that is. And how we handle that experience carries over into how we handle ourselves into adulthood. Bullying continues to be relevant and topical in today's society. About 40% of Canadian workers report being bullied on the job on a weekly basis. So tonight's guests are going to leave you with some tools on how to cope with bullying if this is your current situation or how to bully-proof your child if your child is currently being bullied at school. There's a number that you'll see on your screen and we'd love it if you could call that number to share your personal stories, ask questions or share any comments that you have on this topic with our guests tonight who are excited and waiting to hear from you. So first I'm very pleased to welcome Master Phil Nguyen. He is a seventh degree black belt master in Taekwondo and he's also the author of Bully Busters and Beyond, which is an award-winning anti-bullying program for kids that has earned him numerous awards, including the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal and Citizen of the Year. Thanks for joining us, Phil. It's always an honor. Next, we have Kathy Hurtis of Hurtis HR. And Kathy is a human resources and workplace bullying and harassment expert. And she's also giving away a coaching session and assessment valued at $300 to our viewers tonight. So to win, all you have to do is post a comment on her Hurtis HR Facebook page about what you found the most valuable on today's show. And a winner will be chosen at random. So I'd like to thank you both for coming onto the show tonight and sharing your expertise on a topic that's always been relevant, but today I find it, it enjoys a lot more cachet and awareness than it did 20 years ago. And so my first question to you both is to ask you what led you to become experts in this field? Were you ever bullied or was one of your children ever bullied? Maybe we can start with you, Phil. Sure, thank you. Uh, when I was in uh, grade seven, I remember being uh, bullied by uh, someone who was bigger than me and it would physically intimidate me and follow me down the streets after school and I still remember uh, feeling scared which is not a feeling that we like to have and then the following year is my uh, graduating year from grade school and uh, I was doing quite well in school actually but uh, maybe because of that academic success there was a couple of girls that I still remember would uh, make fun of me uh, the, those two and another boy who would make fun of me with the slanted eyes and because of my different color skin so uh, racial bullying mm -hmm. if, uh, if you will uh, then, ironically, uh, later on, I became a bully. Um, That's and interesting, Phil, because I've always found that the line between being a victim and a perpetrator is so fine. Exactly. It was actually uh, a best friend of mine, uh, and his uh, mom had falsely accused me of, of stealing from their home, so that made me upset. So at the time, I, was, uh, I had power in the school. I was a school president. I was captain of the uh, soccer team and the uh, uh, German ball team, school patrol. And so I said, hey, guys, you know, th th he's not my friend anymore. Don't hang out with him. And I still remember him sulking around the perimeter of, uh, of uh, the schoolyard. And I, I, I seem to remember uh, having a sense of power over him but not a good sense of power. It's only later on when I became an adult uh, that I realized I had become the bully. And then fast forward to when I became a parent, and uh, most of us can uh, relate that uh, one of our greatest fears is for our kids to be bullied at school. So I remember in kindergarten, when, uh, when I went to see my uh, son's grade school teacher, my kin his uh, kindergarten teacher, I remember asking him during the first parent conference, as I was reflecting on my own bullying experience, you know, is he going to be bullied or racially or uh, physically like I was? And so I asked her, hey, um, you know, is my son being bullied? Uh, to which she answered, uh, no, he's not. I said, oh, that's good. Uh, may I ask how come? And she replied, because they respect him too much. Mm -hmm. So now that I'm a, a parent, a, a taekwondo master, an adult, I decided to make a difference and write a book about bully busters and beyond. And the very first chapter is um, respectfulness in yourself. Mm, and Phil, you had a, a really interesting story to tell about what prompted you to write this book. Was It was because of an experience of being cyber bullied yourself um, after you had published your first book on martial arts. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, yeah, so I'd uh, written a book about family martial arts training. It, it uh, went well on Amazon. And then one day during a uh, holiday season, I was, you know, basking in the glory of reading all my family members and friends reviews say, hey great book uh, and then I came across this random review which was probably longer than the book itself 
basically outlining how terrible the book was and how terrible the person that I was. So that brought me back down to earth, but it made me realize that was it a shock to you? It was a shock um, because I you never see it coming. You never expect to be the victim of that kind of hatred. It I was trying to put personal. out good in the world, right? Yeah. And so, uh, uh, ironically, then I realized there and then that no matter how high you aspire in life uh, in the highest levels of success, uh, there's still going to be bullies, haters, naysayers. Even the Prime and Minister so of Canada. Even uh, the highest levels of leadership, right? Yeah. And so I realized that is uh, part of growing up, that is part of leadership, and that. Um, negative review actually inspired me to write my next book which is uh, Nine Treasures to Self-Confidence, Self-Esteem, mm. Strength of Character because I believe once you, uh, you build yourself strong on the inside you can face anything on the outside not only bullying but adversity in life. Very true and I want to talk more about your book in a minute but first Kathy tell me a little bit about your experiences and what led you to become the expert that you are on workplace harassment and bullying so bullying after the playground years which is just as prevalent that's right. It's very prevalent and it's it's interesting because the bullies we have in the workplace now are just those children wearing suits and carrying briefcases. Absolutely. Right? So if they haven't had their behavior changed on the way up, they're still acting out uh, in the workplace. Um, so in terms of my own personal experience, thankfully it was very limited with bullies as a child, but I remember changing schools in elementary school and being the shortest, newest kid in the class and getting picked on. Um, and years later there was a school reunion and it happened about five years ago. I went back to the school reunion and I remember being in the washroom, coming out to wash my hands and the doors opened and my elementary bully walked through the door, this girl who had made my life horrid. Did your heart stop? It did and my fingers got clammy and the panic and that sort of fight or flight response kicked in. And this would have been how many years later? Oh, 30? Amazing. At least 30 years later. Amazing how your physiological response yeah. is so fresh. Yeah, it's just stamped right onto you. So you do, you just immediately go back to that environment. And she came right up in front of me. And, you know, and I felt my whole breath being held and my body being tense. And she said to me, I am so glad that you're here. I've wanted for so many years to apologize to you for what I had done. So, but, but that initial response was like, eh, now what do I do, right? So it is that sort of thing that stays with you. And, and in the work that I do with adults um, in the workplace with bullying, you see a lot of that. It's so subtle, so many of the things that happen. We're used to the schoolyard where maybe it's a punch or a hit or something like that. In the workplace, I hate to say it the wrong way here, but it, that's almost a relief because if there's a hit, we can have a charge, we can take care of this act, it's criminal, it's dealt with. But so much of the bullying is it's subtle. Not, it's not black and white. That's right. Yeah, mm. yeah. So getting involved with it and, and what I focus on now is a lot of training and workshops and, and working with organizations across the country to make sure that they have really good, respectful workplaces. Yeah. I remember being bullied as a child, being bullied very, very badly, and uh, people didn't take it seriously. The response was always, oh, just ignore it, oh, sticks and stones, oh, don't pay attention to Johnny. Um, and it was, it was frustrating. We were never taught to fight back. We were never taught to show that we were strong. And so it seems like there are a lot more empowering ways to deal with bullying than there would be to just sort of sit back and hope that it passes and hope that the perpetrator goes away. And Phil, you talk about five ways to deal with bullying in your book and in the program that you present at schools. First of all, tell me a little bit about this program that you present at schools. How long have you been doing this for and what, what age range of children do you target? Sure, thanks. Um, it's uh, Bully Busters. Uh, my wife and I created uh, over 10 years ago. She combined her conflict resolution background with my own martial arts background and a personal development background. And we created a uh, program, uh, Bully Busters, Nine Treasures to Self-Confidence, Self-Esteem, and uh, Strength of Character. So I go into the schools, just like I did today, and uh, we have a school assembly, and I teach them the nine treasures. Uh, and then we break out into workshops, and we go a little bit more deeper into the concept so that they can apply it in their real life. I want to talk about those nine treasures a little later in the program, but can we maybe go into the five, five ways to, to bully-proof yourself? Uh, use your voice, yeah, use absolutely. your... Yes, uh, I talk about the uh, five ways to uh, bully-proof yourself and your child before it's too late. Okay. Right? Because this is all about being proactive and uh, preventative. Is there an and, age uh, that it's too late? Um, well, before you get bullied. Okay. Uh, and because I believe even though bullying is a temporary act, even though it can last a long time, it's temporary in nature, but its scars, as you mentioned, Absolutely. can last for a lifetime. Absolutely. Um, so the, uh, the five ways, I believe that you can bully-proof yourself, basically working, uh, making yourself strong on the inside, is that uh, number one is use your body. Okay. So um, 
for those who can see, I'm not a physically imposing person, uh, but I've learned to uh, carry myself with confidence. So what I teach uh, people of all ages, because this is what I do, I teach people how to stand up for themselves, stand up against bullying, stand up for their uh, goals and dreams. Mm -hmm. um, so the first one is to walk with confidence, so it's back straight, you know, chin up, and the hands going to the side, exactly. Posture is, is a big, big, big component of uh, not seeing yourself as a, uh, as a victim. Uh, appropriate eye contact, you don't want to be like looking down but nor do you want to be glaring and mm. stalking uncomfortably. So you want to be walking with confidence, eye, appropriate eye contact, and if you're confronted, an assertive stance. Not an aggressive stance, this will only incite more fighting and violence, and that's what not martial arts is not all about. Martial arts is about building a more peaceful world. And it's not about being uh, in a scared stance either, mm -hmm. because sadly, uh, bullies will um, pick on you even more when you mm. see even more as a victim. So you want to have an assertive stance. And what this means is, I don't want to fight, I don't want to get in conflict with you, but I can stand up for myself if necessary. So mm -hmm. it's that perfect uh, middle ground. So that's use your uh, body. Uh, number two is use your mind. Uh, it's a mindset. And uh, you know we have to understand that since the dawn of civilization, there's been predators and prey. Absolutely. Right, from the days of the dinosaurs. So I don't believe that's going to go any, uh, anywhere soon. But instead of uh, focusing so much on the bullying, what I like to do is turn, transform victims into victors. And the way we do that, I believe, is with a mindset that if you don't allow yourself to be a victim, if you don't allow other people to treat you like a victim, then uh, there's no bullying because bullies are defined by their victims. Mm -hmm. I remember once uh, Albert Einstein once said, uh, there is no such thing as darkness. There is only light mm -hmm. and the absence of light. Mm -hmm. You can study light, but you can't study darkness. That's very so powerful. Light uh, a darkness is the absence of light. So same thing with bullying. If there's no vic uh, victim, if, you don't, if you're not a victim, then there's no bully, right? So that's why I want to teach that mindset that be prepared. There's going to be disappointment. There's going to be adversity. There's going to be a bully. There's going to be uh, hater comments online like I'd received. And uh, it's an opportunity for you to grow and then be empowered. So that's the uh, use your mind. And uh, number three is use your voice. Mm. So you don't want to be, you know, too loud and uh, you know overpowering, but nor do you want to be so meek. And mm -hmm. that's what a lot of uh, I do a lot of training with my students is their voice. They use their voice as a tool uh, for empowerment and self-defense. Uh, so to literally and figuratively stand up for themselves. Uh, the fourth uh, way uh, to use is use your legs to either walk away or to run away. So I even though I teach the art of self-defense, so martial arts do know how to defend themselves with their fists if necessary, but uh, it's better to walk away is what I tell them. I'd say, I'd rather uh, give you a high five and you're all safe and you have your dignity that you walked away from a fight uh, than to read about you in the newspaper. Uh, there's a quote, I think, of Robin Sharma who once said, never cry over anything that's not gonna cry over you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whatever physical thing that people want, just let it go, walk away, or run away to safety if need be. There's no dishonor and running away from a difficult, dangerous situation. So by walk away, you mean um, having avoided a fight, not having fought them successfully and one strolling away because you know they're not going to run after you. That's right. <laughs> exactly right. Now, the last resort in the five ways to bullyproof yourself is to use your hands. Now, of course, I'm looking at it from a martial arts perspective. I, I truly believe in the, the power of martial arts. Uh, and, and to defend yourself and use your hands exactly means that is to defend yourself um, because uh, there's a program out there a lot of schools have a wits program walk away ignore uh, tell someone uh, seek help I think that's terrific information but See, what if for they, me was a big waste of time growing up did not work for me at all what happens if um, they follow you if you walk away and they follow you and they push you to the ground or they, you know, they get you in a headlock, they get you in a noogie, they punch you, they kick you, or sit on you. This is stories that I receive on a, on a regular basis. So what, what if you can't walk away? What if you can't ignore? And what if there's no one to tell? All right, so to me, the last line of defense, uh, pardon the pun, is uh, to be able to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. And so uh, to give you an idea, a, uh, a friend of mine was taught by his parents. He said, no, 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 just walk away. Just let it go, let it go. Mm -hmm. And for years, he got beat up. And this is a 40 plus successful person now, but he was saying, you know, my parents taught me wrong. Yeah. He said, that taught me to live in fear for my entire life. 
And now finally he was able to break through from that mindset that now he can stand up for himself. You, you can defend yourself if necessary. Um, like I said. I'm, I'm a big advocate of that first punch in the schoolyard. Mm. I really am. Um, I don't want to, uh, viewers to think that I'm advocating violence. And martial arts is all about being in a peaceful world. Mm -hmm. I will share one of many stories. There's a, a, a little girl. This is almost 15 years ago. Okay. Eight years old or so. She's a sweet girl, you know, fairly petite. She's being bullied by a boy. Physically, and uh, needless to say, the dad was, um, was uh, quite frustrated by the whole situation. Mm -hmm. One day, the dad comes up to me and says, you know, uh, today she was bullied again, and uh, she punched the bully in the nose, mm -hmm. and she never bugged, uh, the bully never bugged him again. And this is my philosophy for those who are all politically correct about being able to defend yourself. I believe that the pain of a physical punch is far less than the psychological and emotional pain that will last a lifetime. And unfortunately, there are no consequences for that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Kathy, what's the adult version of that punch to the nose? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a great question, Mark. It's a really good question. <laughs> I'm sure um, our viewers are just hanging on your response. Yeah. That's what I would like to know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I'm with that as well. I think when you get into those situations, you use all those stances that you've talked about, go through that checklist, but don't hesitate to say that you're worth it and fight for yourself because that's what it comes down to. So in the workplace, um, there's really a gender difference. Um, and I know I'll probably get a call about the stereotypical part of this, but the male worker tends to use aggression, uh, loud, intimidating threats, you know, there'll be comments like, I'll get you for that. Mm -hmm. Those sorts of things happen. Women are a little more subtle, um, and they'll tend to shun. So mm -hmm. that becomes social, the punch in the face. Abuse, right? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. that, that, let me just, I'm going to invite all four mm -hmm. in this department, but not the fifth, mm -hmm. okay, to my, uh, my house party or my luncheon or whatever. And so the shunning seems to be a really um, popular move that would be the punch in the face on the female side of it. Mm -hmm. And how do you know that they're bullying you or, or maybe they just have really bad manners? <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, and that's interesting because we'll often see a generational difference as well. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you'll be in an environment where where uh, behavior is happening that's completely inappropriate, the person exhibiting the behavior will say, I didn't mean it, it was a joke, that's how I was raised, you're too sensitive. So all of those things come out. But at the end of the day, the bar is, is this a respectful workplace? Mm -hmm. Did your behavior appear respectful to the average person on the street? We're using common sense here, right? Mm -hmm. And in most cases, if it's not hitting that bar of respect, you've got an issue. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've heard a lot of women, some friends of mine, complain about working in a, in a workplace that are female dominated. Ah, okay, yes. And what has your experience been, especially working in a, in a government town where mm -hmm. there is that, that element of you know, female dominant workplaces, sometimes I feel that the notion of a sisterhood is a little bit of a fallacy and that women are much more complicit in the abuse of other women than is politically correct or comfortable to admit out loud. Has that been your experience working with your clients? Um, it's there for sure. It's not in all of my client environments, but it's there. And, and honestly, the difference comes down to the leadership. So mm -hmm. leadership isn't about your title, it's about your ability to influence. Mm -hmm. And I do find that there's more jealousy amongst women. Um, women will tend to sit down and have a conversation about who she's sleeping with, what outfit did she wear. Men don't tend to do that, right? They're not sitting there talking about, gosh, you know, I thought his tie was really vulgar today. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't happen, right? Doesn't happen. Yeah. And yet women, for some reason, jump right in and have those conversations. So it does happen. And in a lot of cases, um, it really, as I say, it comes down to the leadership in that department, uh, whether that be, it doesn't have to be the manager of a department. It's one woman in that department who stands mm -hmm. up and says, you know what, that's inappropriate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, what Julie wears is what Julie wears. We're here to do our job. It's the person who says, hey, you know what? The emperor's not wearing any clothes. Exactly. Right? Yeah. We're just about to head to break, but when okay. we come back, I want to delve more into that jealousy bit, and I want to talk more about how not to make yourself small so that other people feel big, which is often a coping mechanism too many of us resort to. So don't go away. When we come back, we'll learn a little bit more about workplace harassment and how to equip yourself with the right tools. We'll be right back.